Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Now I'm going to say something which a lot of people get mad at me whenever I say it, but I'm still going to say it, which is if your job in cybersecurity, it's all about running tools, then your job is at risk. Now I'm going to explain what I mean by that. Five to six years ago, if you were running scanners or writing detection rules, analyzing SIM alerts, you, like you were in demand, right? And you could become like a very good mid-level security engineer. But today, that skill set is becoming rapidly very very automated automation is changing the game very very rapidly so it is important for you to know where the market is going and what you can do now the good news is i'm going to show you what you can do how you can make yourself future proof what are the areas you should be focusing on so please stick around until the end and for an announcement also so if you're new to the channel my name is famuruj lal i'm a senior security consultant with aws and I made this channel to like, you know, give advice on cloud security, AI and cybersecurity careers. So please do like and subscribe to the channel and let's get started. Okay, so this is what I was talking about that your cybersecurity skills are outdated if all you do is run tools. And why is that? Because AI automation is changing the game, right? Because, you know, uh, I, when I started out in cybersecurity like 20 years ago, it technical skills were a non-negotiable, right? You need to understand packet captures, idea signatures, math, logs. But unfortunately now, right now, the, those skills are being rapidly offloaded to AI co-pilots, you know, SIM platforms, vulnerability scanners, cloud security services, all of them are rapidly changing to accommodate AI, agentic AI. And this is not like hype. This is not just me saying, already you're seeing vendors jumping onto the agentic AI bandwagon and CISOs are being bombarded with that. Hey, why do you need low level security engineers when agentic AI, AI does that, that does not sleep. AI does not like ask for a raise. AI does not, you know, <laughs> complain to you about like uh, gig promotions and all that, you know, it is unfair, but it is the reality of what the job market across the board and not just cybersecurity, just to like, you know, this is happening everywhere everywhere this game is changing so this is basically what the divide is right now within cyber security i want you to have this mindset there are two people in cyber security right now be it SOC, be it cloud security be it pretty much any penetration testing they are people who are the operators you know what operators are they are people who rely on fixed process you know there's a process in place and they just follow that process nothing no thinking no analytical thinking, I have to get a ticket, I have to close it, I have to run a scan, put an IP address, download a PDF, email it to the IT team, you know, that sort of thing. And they are the other people who are the orchestrator. These are people who understand the systems, right? Not just the steps, they understand what these systems are, what is the business value. They are integrating AI into the input, they are, they are integrating automation and they are understanding the context. These are the people who are going to thrive, so please, you cannot be an operator you have to become an orchestrator okay so well, how do you become that so that that's the thing so first step is you have to change your mindset from tool usage to contextual problem solving anybody can follow a playbook and ai can follow a playbook better than you but the contextual problem solvers you know they are the ones who can connect these technical signals to organizational consequences that they will understand okay if this happens this is what the impact is to the organization and ai can understand it to some extent but not to the extent that you can okay because you will bridge what the ai sees with what the leadership needs to know so when an ai gives you an incident you can tell if this is a genuine threat or maybe this is the ai making a mistake the, is this effect regulating data or low risk assets like which is what is getting impacted what is the operational impact if we act on this Maybe it's Black Friday, you cannot shut down your systems. Maybe the CEO has some like a promotion plan, so you cannot stop the system at this time. These are not things that AI will understand immediately. This is something you will understand. How do you develop these sort of things? Get involved in high level discussions, talk to your manager, you know, run an incident response uh, simulation or write a report, get involved in these sort of high level discussions so you can like give more data to your problem solving. So problem solving is tough. It's like something you have to learn. It's not naturally that comes to a lot of people. So please, but think about that from tool usage to problem solving. The second one is if you're in like a compliance reporting to GRC engineering. So people who are not technical, even these people, you have to understand that GRC, if all you were doing is documentation, especially if you're in consultancy, okay, now it's becoming engineering. GRC engineering is rapidly becoming very, very popular. Basically, you are embedding compliance rules 
into your infrastructure, right? Through things like policy and code, automation pipelines, you need to understand that how that Excel sheet, the controls in your Excel sheet, that actually becomes a control that you can test and refine and implement it, right? So instead of you have a checklist that check all S3 buckets are encrypted. Actually, they are encrypted by default now. That's that's a bad example. But check all S3 buckets are encrypted. You have you can write an AWS rule that continuously is enforcing encryption. So paperwork. If your skills are just based on paperwork, please try to move beyond this. There are good ways of doing it now. You don't have to become a coder. You don't have to learn Python or Terraform and all that because you have things like Vibe Coding, uh, Q Developer, so all these things are coming out which can write code very, very quickly. Okay, so, and that leads to my next part. Number three is, the skill shift number three is, instead of writing scripts, thinking about securing AI code, more and more companies are now moving towards LLMs to write backend code. Almost every company is going to do this no matter how much they say they will not either for low level systems or whatever but some form of genii is now incorporated to it the problem is these systems most of the time they do not understand security right because they're just building on what they already know it's called wipe coding right but unfortunately this is where the threats also come in because developers they just put in the normal like uh, prompts they don't think about security right so you need to learn how to do AI code validation, you know, detecting, detecting hallucinated logic, verifying access control parts, doing threat modeling. This is not something you can just put on the pipeline. So this is the sort of things you need to understand. This is becoming a major risk. Even if you read the Anthropics latest threat reports, they are saying that vibe coding is introducing more risk, no more problems than it is solving. So I hope you understand like the skill shifts. Now, what can you do about it? So how to future proof yourself, right? First of all, like you don't have to become overwhelmed, right? It might seem, oh my God, how am I gonna start this man? I'm just a SOC engineer or not. Start small, first of all, audit your current workflow, okay? The, the, the things that you're doing, which parts can AI do already do better, right? Which of my stuff can AI easily automate? Then you know, okay, like you will know that what it cannot do, okay? So understand this, first of all, write down what are the things that your major part of your workflow which can be automated then you will know these are the things I have to move away from and focus on other stuff. Learn a few frameworks which are there. Now, AI governance is very, very important and the people who understand it, they are valued, okay? L like things like the NIST AI risk management framework, that's completely free. The OASP LLM top 10, that is completely free. You don't have to like buy it or anything. They are freely available. The ISO standards, they are, you have to purchase, but I'm sure your company will, e will easily be able to, you know, sponsor these sort of things. And Thirdly, please build or review one AI related project. Do not just think about AI as a conceptual thing. Make an AI AI application which talks to an LLM or threat model an existing AI application. You know, write something like in GRC engineering, write a policy and code, see how it happens, create a small automation. Do this sort of hands-on stuff which gives you evidence and Think like an engineer, but like they say, act like a strategist, you know, you under you have to get into the architecture level of things. Do not be that guy who is just getting like a Jira ticket or a ServiceNow ticket and he's closing it and he's very happy and he's thinking that, oh, I'm completely secure in my job. You know, the people who are understanding the impact and the contextual information, they are the people who are uh, really moving forward. So this is what I want you to understand. And because... I'm being very clear because I'm seeing this more and more in people, especially people like me who have been in the industry for a long time. And we, you know what happens? We become complacent. We become lazy. And the most dangerous thing in cybersecurity right now is that I've been doing this for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. This job, which I'm doing, I'm not changing because my experience is very valuable, but it will only be value if you evolve with it. If you are still using the same scripts, tools, and frameworks that were half a decade old, you're not evolving. You're thinking that this is what I'm doing. This is, I'll always be in demand. I can guarantee you that the industry will pass you by. Okay, so please upgrade yourself. Focus on things like agentic AI threat modeling, GISA engineering, uh, AI assisted security review. Instead of doing a certification, focus on these things, these are skills, because skills will be more valuable than certifications. I can almost guarantee you that skills are what will set you apart. I'm not saying certifications are crap. Don't please, <laughs> that's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying is 
these skills will be much more important than certifications going forward. If you are still interested in learning more, uh, like I said, I'll have an announcement. I have launched my academy there. I, I don't teach any certifications. I'm going to be focusing on skills. That's it, teaching you things like threat modeling, uh, GRC engineering, vibe coding, security risks, those sort of things are what my uh, uh, academy is going to be focusing on. Do check it out. No, not, no, uh, like what do you call them? No obligation or anything, but I just wanted to put that out there. So I hope you've got a good understanding now of where the market is going and why like uh, your skills are outdated. Is it something uh, I really wanted to make you understand that if tools is all you're focusing on, your tools will get your, sorry, your skills will get outdated. So I hope this was useful to you. Please do like and subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.